Today, I am here with Mike Kenny, and he was in the military and is going to tell you a little bit more about himself. All right, Mike, you're up. Well, all right. As Sarah said, I'm Mike Kenny. So I'm, I'm a uh, 1993 graduate of the United States Milita Military Academy at West Point. So that was my source of commissioning. I got commis commissioned as a second lieutenant. In the infantry, my first duty assignment was with the 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault 3187 Roxans. So I spent a good couple years there. It was a great experience. I was a rifle platoon leader, a reconnaissance platoon leader or scout. And then I was the HHC executive officer XO. So I learned all sorts of good things about logistics and things of that nature. You know, so, uh, supply, fueling, food, ammunition, you name it, you know, we had to provide it, you know, at least, you know, to the forward line of troops. So that was good. Um, I'd say early on in my career, I went to Special Forces Assessment and Selection. And past that, went through the Special Forces Qualification course, past that, and then started a career as a special forces officer. I was with first special forces group out of Fort Lewis, Washington, and spent the rest of my career as a special forces officer, mostly at Fort Lewis. In first group, did an assignment in Hawaii at the Special Operations Command Pacific, and then ended my career as an instructor at the Command and General Staff College and the School of Advanced Military Studies, both at Fort Leavenworth. Well, that's very that's, interesting. Yeah, Sounds like you've been much. all over. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> what made you decide to join the military? I, uh, you know, I thought service was important. You know, giving back. Um, my uncle, my godfather, he uh, he was he was in the service. He was an infantry guy. You know, out of Fort Riley, Big Red One, served in Vietnam. Um, so, and then my father was in the Coast Guard. Okay. So, you know, we had a few people in the family did that. Um, and what I liked about the service is, you know, kind of mind and body. You know, you, you've got to be a thinker, They, you know, in the military, in, in, in the Army in specific, but I'd hazard a guess throughout all of the Department of Defense. They take uh, education and training very, very uh, seriously. Um, and, you know, the military delineates between the two. So okay. training, as you want as one might expect, you're going to get in basic training, yeah. your commissioning source, your, you know, uh, it, you know for in my case, it was the infantry officer basic course. And also at uh, the Commander General Staff College, that's your PME, your, uh, um, geez, professional military education, as they call it. Okay. So similarly, and there's a distinction. So one is really more the physical skills, the other is broadening your mind. And, uh, you know, the military takes that very seriously. They want you to be a thinker, but then, you know, you also need to perform. So fitness is important as well. So you've got both. Both. So that is good. It's kind of an all around. Make sure you're in good shape, both physically and mentally. Sound mind and sound body. That's exactly, exactly. it. Exactly. So what was your least favorite part about the military? Well, your life's not really your own. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you've, made, you've made a commitment and you know, not that it's bad because... Right. You've committed to an organization and a mission that you feel passionately about. So when uh, when Uncle Sam says, "Hey, here's where you're going," and and you're going, you, your time starts now. <laughs> Execute. You know, you're like, oh, I had other plans. You know, I, you know. I remember the few times I was like, "Hey, I got my birthday coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas." I'm like, hey, this is good. We came off a training cycle, and it was like, no, here's what you're doing for the next six months to a year. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, it's next year. And I've been gone, 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 which on one hand is exhilarating. It's an adventure. But on the other hand, you know, you realize, you know, you're, you're not really the master of your own destiny, but that's okay. You know, that's the, right. that's the price of entry, you know. Exactly. Which is just something to keep in mind when you're making that decision. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that would have been a struggle, I would think. Uh, what was the first job you had as a kid? Jeez. <laughs> delivering papers 
delivered papers. Yeah, and that was great. Yeah. You know? So he just did that after school and, you know, got some good tips and was able to hand it off to my brother, you know, so. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> so what did you learn from that that helped you in the future? I'd say the same thing, commitment. You can't just wake up one day and say, you know, I don't feel like doing this because, you know, you've got people, they want their paper. <laughs> you know, so once you've made that commitment, you know, you're like, hey, and, and as a, anything, it's, you know, cost and benefit, you know, there are pros and cons. And on one hand, you're like, hey, I want to get paid. You know, I want to make money. I want some disposable income. But on the other hand, you're like, okay, well, this is a commitment. You got to deliver these papers every day and, you know, come you know, rain or sleet or snow, it does not matter. You will get out there and you will deliver the papers, you know? So, exactly. hey, yeah. there it is, you know? That's right. <laughs> you were an essential worker way back then. <laughs> you know, that's exactly it. <laughs> so, um, what other, did you have other education before you got into the military? You know, so through the military academy, you know, not only was obviously my source of commissioning, but right you know, they, they confer a bachelor's. So for me, it was a uh, bachelor's of science in systems engineering. Okay. Got a master's through, you know, the, the college, through the command general staff college. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and then, you know, a variety of other. I'll say, right. And I know you uh, started a nonprofit now that you're out of the military. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So Warriors Ascent, which is what I run, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that helps veterans and first responders with PTS. So, you know, I take that very seriously, but, you know, in addition to the mission, you know, I'll say even just beyond the mission, which I feel is very important um, because I myself am, am, am a veteran. Yep. And in terms of first responders, my brother's a policeman. Okay. So, you know, being able to help first responders, police, fire, EMS, it's very important okay. to me. Um, I would say now more than ever, well, maybe right. more than ever, but most certainly it's, it's uh, definitely been underscored the criticality right. of mental health. Right. So, you know, that falls within our portfolio, you know, so a lot of what we do is, is very germane and uh, very applicable to, I think, you know, the trauma and uh, stressors that people are undergoing currently. So I, I, I'd say what we do is even all the more valuable. And then lastly, you know, one of the last things I did before I separated from the military is I went through the Kaufman Fast Track program, oh, really? which is, yeah, you know, for those that don't know, entrepreneurship. So it's a it's a 10 week or so course. It's a primer on entrepreneurship, small business. Mm -hmm. And uh, interesting from your own startup and really understand all the facets of, of small business and what have you. And uh yeah, so I, I would say, in addition to the mission, that's the opportunity that Warriors Ascent presents me as the executive director, because we're very small, yeah. nimble, but we're punching well above our weight. <laughs> but it gives me the opportunity to, uh, to really be involved in, in a great many facets of the organization, from programs to development to marketing, you that's know, great. you name it. Uh-huh, that's awesome. And that is a definite need, especially in the world we're living in today. Oh, what would your definition of success be, Mike? Well, geez, I would, <laughs> I would say, I mean, obviously, and you know, I mean, this is important, but it shouldn't, shouldn't be the, you know, the end all be all, you know, you want to be able to pay the bills, you know, but there, there are certain studies I think that have shown, Hey, what's your number? What, what is the number that you need to achieve? in order to be you know, financially stable, happy, pay your bills. Some will say it's 70,000, some will say it's 80. Numbers aside, you wanna be able to at least have some degree of financial security. You right. know, I would say that's important. So for me, when I chose my major, I wanted to make sure it was something that I knew I could earn a living with. And then it just so happened that with the military, right. my major aside, you know, as a commissioned officer, you know, I'd be doing that. But really I'd say more than anything that being established do do what you're passionate about do what you do what you love because if you're waking up every day even if you're making money and even if you're even if you're making really really good money if you hate waking up every day and doing your job you're going to be miserable right. you know now there's a flip side to the coin i mean if you're absolutely love what you're doing but you're not making a living that's kind of a hobby <laughs> that's exactly. a hobby. And if you can do that on the side, then that's great. You know, that's perfect. But to me, 
you know, success is you're doing what you love. You're, uh, you know, you're, you're making enough money to, to sustain yourself. But then also me personally, you're helping other people, you know, you're serving in some capacity and you don't have to be, you know, saving lives and all sorts of stuff. But if, if you're making the world a little bit better, even for just one person, uh, you know, one service or, you know, product or whatever it might be, you know, that to me, I think is really the definition of success. And it doesn't have to be grandiose. You don't have to be Elon Musk, you know, <laughs> <Exactly>. but, <laughs> but to me, Hey, I, I'm, I'll speak for myself. I feel pretty happy right. with what I've accomplished and where I'm at in life. Always, you know, the, the other thing is um, growth mindset, you know, be a lifelong learner, always continue to develop, always learn. Right. Because you know, for me, Hey, I, I never want to rest on my laurels and be complacent. I want to be, I want to be satisfied. I want to be grateful. I want to exhibit gratitude, right. but I always want to try to be a little bit better than I am today, tomorrow. That's great. That's great advice. So, and hopefully the kids will pick that up. So, well, thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate you helping out and uh, sharing your story. I'm sure it'll be beneficial to the kids. Absolutely. Well, hey, <laughs> take care. Stay healthy, everybody. Thanks so much.